Jesus Christ. You call me the tax man. You have to be hard to live here. It was alleged I robbed him, took £50,000 worth of heroin off him, put over a thousand fights and won every man I've ever fought, so you fight to the death and that's it. Just awesome genetics, isn't it? Basically, I'm the law in this area. Picked him up and I ran at him and threw him into this door and the door fucking smashed his head into there. And he fell back and I headbutted him and I threw him again into the door really hard. Brian Cockrell is one of Britain's most notorious gangsters, a self-proclaimed justice system of the underworld. In his world, only the strong survive, and every could be his last. For 20 years, Brian Cockrell has used his brutal reputation to extort millions from drug dealers. He sees it as a tax, a levy they have to pay to allow them to operate in his area. The people who don't know what taxing is, it's... Uh Drug dealers sell drugs on the streets, and when they sell the drugs and get the profits, the money, I'm usually going to take the money off them. Obviously, they can't go to the police and say, well, Brian Cockrell's just been round and took vast amounts of money off and vast amounts of drugs, because obviously it's illegal to sell drugs, and so as they try to convict me, they convict themselves. Despite the risks, and at 42, Cockrell remains on top of his game. His lifestyle requires him to be brutal and intimidating. He commands fear as he marshals the underworld in his patch. Most people have tried to emulate me. They're either dead or they're doing life sentences. And to do it, it probably is the hardest job in the world. These days, taxing drug dealers is not what it used to be. The dealers don't have as much cash because competition has hit their profits. The taxman's returns are not quite as lucrative. I remember one day we went out and we made 15 grand in about five hours. This was 20 years ago. You know, a massive amount of money. Years ago, when you used to tax them, there'd only be half a dozen in each town, so you could hit them, and they'd have the drugs in the house. They'd have the money in the house, and uh, you'd kick the door and run in, you'd get drugs, money, and you'd make a fortune. Cockrell calls himself the tax man. The reality is that he uses his great strength to muscle in on criminals and their ill-gotten gains. But wrestling huge sums of cash from top drug dealers is not without risk. <clears throat> to keep one step ahead of his enemies, Cockrell trains three times a day. He is a 22-stone steroid-filled fighting machine who claims never to have lost a fight. Like, say I was fighting you in the street, I'd catch you with a right uppercut there, I'd come in, come on, fucking yeah. throw your shot. So I'm yeah. coming in there, you know. So if I couldn't catch you with that, I'd come in and grab you, yeah. I'd throw it, pull my yeah. arm, I'd pull, see your eye, yeah, pull your eye there. Yeah. So as you're going out, pull your eye out. And as and I'm if I pull your ear, I can put, a, put your knee and pull the bite your ear off. So your ear's coming up and you're screaming. I mean, it's like if I grabbed you in a headlock, just yeah. like that. There's no way you're getting out of that, no. is there? You know? no. And if I crushed you, then... The, Sorry. I pulled his eye out within about three seconds, he was fucked. But when you pull an eye out, it dangles like on a socket, it's like on a, like a string. I fought this lad and I bit his ear and his nose off. But I was feeling generous that day and I gave them back. It was a bit like fucking Hannibal Lecter, I suppose. What did he look like afterwards, was it? It looked like Hannibal Lecter had got hold of him. <laughs> it's been alleged in the past that I've been, well, I've been charged with these things. It's not just alleged, I've been charged with. Uh, murder charges, um, attempted murder on two police, 30 or 40, section 18 wounding with intent, that's punching someone with hand, but a wounding with intent, a section 18 usually you've got to use a, a weapon, but the class of my hands is uh, deadly weapons anyway, the police. I've been uh, arrested for um, racketeering, blackmail, kidnapping, firearms, drug dealing, um, taxing, um, shootings, supposed to have people shot. Um, people murdered, I've also had people taken away and killed. I suppose I've um, killed people myself. It's been alleged that I've had people's uh, pubs, petrol bombs burnt out, cars burnt out. Did you do all those things? Would I do all them things? Come on. Um, maybe some of them, but not all of them. Despite being questioned thousands of times and hundreds of arrests, Cockrell's only convictions are for dangerous driving, criminal damage, and threatening behaviour. What does he look like to you when he's fighting? He changes totally. 
It's absolutely, totally just goes blank. There's no expression or anything on his face. His eyes go black. And then you just turn it off like that and he's back to normal. Amanda, Brian's partner, has seen it all. Her loyalty to Brian has been unflinching, despite constant fears of revenge and reprisals to the family. It isn't as easy as you think. It sounds easy, but it isn't. We've tried to think about going up to someone and saying, I want your money and I want your car and I want whatever. It isn't as easy as you think. If it was easy, they'd all be done, wouldn't they? Brian lives by the law of the jungle. He has a passion for huge animals and has intimate knowledge of the behaviour of predators. I went to a zoo once, Barra and Furnace, but um, I was stood there and the tiger pissed all over me, a female one. We both said it must be the hormone doing your test, also it must smell it. It's just a sign of whatever you, you'll find out when you go and do the tigers. But I stood there, so a big ginger pussy pissed all over me. <laughs> It's alleged that I've taken people away and played the piggy game on them. And people say, what's the piggy game? Like, well, I've took their shoes and socks off and broken each toe with a hammer until they've told me where the, drug, the money is or if they, they move out of town and stop torturing people. But none of these little pigs got bread and butter. They all went wee, wee, wee all the way on, but uh, they all were screaming. But uh, you never get past two. Now the taxman is planning to take his unconventional style into politics. He's decided to fight for election as mayor. He believes that he can use his powers of persuasion and that voters will see sense and back him. So why do you want to become mayor of Middlesbrough? Well, it was an idea an old woman said to me one day. She said, we've been to the mayor, he's tried to help us, but he can't help us. She said, but you've done more than the mayor. So I thought, you've got a good idea. And she said, why don't you run for mayor? And the other people next door but one said to me, we, um... We can't fucking sell our house because the dealers are there. So I've kicked the door in, ran in, grabbed them, threatened them, got rid of them and uh, chased them up the town. These police have been coming to this house for two years, constantly two or three times a day. Couldn't get rid of them. I got rid of them in ten minutes. I'm doing it as a one-man band. What would it be like? I've heard a full the community behind me, you see. And you're certain, and you're certain that actually uh, you, you get votes? Yeah, 100%, yeah. I think there's a lot of people who vote for me because they know I do the job properly. Getting the job done is Cockrell's trademark. With a backup crew in place, few risk incurring the taxman's wrath. If I go look for him, Liam, I will fucking hate him, you know what I mean? Drug dealers face many dangers. Top of the list is the taxman, Brian Cockrell. <laughs> a one-man fighting machine. Over the years, the taxman claims he's made millions from local dealers. And if backup is needed, the taxman's loyal crew can be very persuasive. Meet Rob, Lee, and Vulture. Well respected man. Yeah, but he can be a monster if he wants to be. He's not a nice person if you're on the wrong side of him. But he is a gentleman. It's because he's got a lot of respect for a lot of, a lot of hard people in the area, in the North East, down London. Fought them all. He's well known, he's fought them all. He's fought all With the fists. Athletes. With fists. With fists, yeah. He's a dangerous man. He's feared. A call brings the taxman to the edge of town, where a car has been stolen from a local dealership. The young lads stolen the car. Obviously, I think it's young lads. We broke in, stole the car. They've drove so far in the car. The car's run out of petrol. So the police have obviously received, got the call, said his place has been broken. He's come down the fingerprint and all the bullshit. The gate have been smashed in. The police have took the car to the compound and now they want £300 of him to get his own car back from the compound, which I think is fucking scandalous. The police get, get, a, get a garage to come and pick it up. They pick it up and obviously they want payment for doing it, so they're coming back to me. These fucking assholes, I'll find out where they are by tonight and it'll be sold. I'll make them pay the £300 to get the car back. We're off now, let's go. I'm like a fucking crusader, mate. <laughs> Keep crusader, yeah. just need a fucking deep. I need a red phone. If I answer not solve anything, why does my fucking phone never stop ringing? <laughs> Hello?